happening now on News Team. We're one day away from 420 and campus plans to stay open for the first time since 2011. Polls close in the New York primary tonight, and with the national convention only three months away, tonight's results could dictate the landscape for the presidential bid. A 100-year-old woman takes a ride in a World War II training plane. And a spooky ghost photo from the Colorado Hotel could prove all the ghost stories true. All this and more today on New Steam Boulder. From the Roser Atlas Center and the College of Media, Communication, and Information at the University of Colorado Boulder, this is News Team Boulder. Happy Tuesday and welcome to News Team Boulder. I'm Kaylee Fisher. And I'm Sarah Shelviri. Tomorrow's 420. Does that mean for CU? Sorry, Aureli Mora has the story. CU Boulder's Norlin Quad once drew in about 10,000 people for a 420 smokeout. This year, campus will remain open and there will be alternative events being held. 420 at CU has usually been associated with drug use, not drug education. The president of Students for Sensible Drug Policy, Elizabeth Henneman, and the Cultural Events Board have teamed up to change that. This is an event um, where we're trying to redefine 420 at the University of Colorado Boulder. We've been very clear in all of our advertising, this is a non-consumption event. Um, so unfortunately, you know, if we see someone consuming in the UMC, we're going to have to ask them to leave. Um, that's not really what this event is about. It's more kind of about um, education and activism as opposed to just con consumption. Um, and uh, there's going to be still a police presence on campus. This year's symposium will feature five keynote speakers, eight panels, discussion led by student organizations and more. Henneman is expecting a large turnout. And this year is our biggest year. We're in the UMC um, on 420. Um, in the past it hasn't been on the exact day so we're hoping to get at least 500 attendees this year. Although officials have cracked down on 420 activities since 2012, they say you can expect a pretty normal day tomorrow. Areli Mora, News Team Boulder. Thanks, Rally. The 420 rally in Denver was canceled because of the snow. Still no word on when the rally will happen. Just a day before the infamous 420, results of a 143-page report details the effects marijuana has had on the state since its legalization. The Department of Public Safety found that there has not been an increase of patients at Colorado treatment centers, but those who are enrolled are heavier users. The study also found more people are using pot and emergency rooms are seeing more marijuana-related visits. The report also notes a dramatic decline in arrests for marijuana-related crimes and a small change in the number of arrests for driving high. School security officers in Douglas County will soon be issued semi-automatic rifles to help protect students in the event of a shooting. The district bought the guns for its certified officers who are legally allowed to carry weapons. Currently, 64 campus security staffs have handguns, but the district believes that the rifles will allow the officers to keep distance from potential shooters while they're being able to protect their students. The CU campus is celebrating Earth Day a little early this year. Earth Day is April 22nd, but all week, a variety of different events on campus will showcase the Earth. Drew Chow Bay went down to the Environmental Center to find out more. It's Earth Week on Friday, but here at the University of Colorado, it's Earth Week, which means all week long there will be tons of environmental activities going on here on campus. Let's go inside and have a look. Earth Week consists of a variety of events, all of which are focused on bringing sustainability and environmental issues to the forefront. Fashion Swap, which will be taking place this Friday, is an event in which students can bring clothes to donate as well as take any other clothes that favor them. Some of the things I'm excited about for Earth Day are we'll have a fashion swap so students can come and bring clothes and pick up clothes for free and just find what they like and uh, have, a, have a little bit of a better way of shopping for clothes and also getting rid of stuff at the end of the semester <laughs> than just throwing it out or going shopping. There will also be showings at Fisk Planetarium, environmental panel discussions, and live bands and local art showcased at EarthFest. There's really good music at noon with the Soul Pros, which is a local hip hop group that um, is professional hip hop musicians, but they're also trained in different sustainability things, so they throw that in there a little bit. 
For more information on Earth Week, you can visit the Environmental Office in UMC 355. There's a lot going on all week here at CU, and if you want more information, be sure to head down to the Environmental Center and grab a pamphlet or just check their website. Drew Chabe, News Team Boulder. Thanks, Drew. Sounds like there's a lot going on this week. I think I'm most excited for the fashion swap, but I'm sure everything else will be great. CU police are still looking for a man who is suspected of starting a fire on East Campus last week. The fire, which is being investigated as arson, occurred at the Biotechnology Building last Wednesday, and the damage are estimated to be between $2,500 and $3,000. Anyone with information should call 303-492-6666. 22 miles plus 37 minutes plus $9 plus a confusing name equals one controversial light rail. News team's Bryce Rednick has more. There are dozens of places on campus for CU students to catch the bus, but if they want to ride something a little quicker, they're out of luck. The train to the plane arrives April 22nd. Light rail is called the University of Colorado A-Line, and although the school lends its name, students in Boulder are left off the rails. Like they were going to have a, a light rail come up this way, and then plans got scratched, and instead it's now this extra lane of highway that we can take the bus. Yay! Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. That's because the new line runs from downtown Denver to DIA, leaving students and others to find alternate rides to the airport. I think R2D is really disorganized, and I think um, their scheduling sucks. I think, uh, I don't know how many times I've, there have been no buses that have come to pick me up. Denver is celebrating the new line, but people in Boulder are upset that they'll have to wait for a light rail of their own. The Denver to Boulder light rail is supposed to be complete by the end of this year, but with only 6 of 41 miles done, it looks like Boulderites are going to have to wait. For News Team Boulder, I'm Bryce Rudnick. Thanks, Bryce. In celebration of the grand opening of the University of Colorado A-Line, commuters will ride for free all day Friday and Saturday. Target is raising employee minimum wage to $10 an hour. This is the retailer's second wage hike in the year after pressures from other competitive stores like Walmart raised their base wage. Two sources with direct knowledge told this um, situation to Reuters employees that they can get their base go up in May. Attorney Sarah Weddington, who represented Jane Roe in the landmark Supreme Court case, Roe v. Wade, will speak at CU this afternoon. After arguing Roe v. Wade at the age of 26, she went on to serve three terms in the Texas House of Representatives and worked as general counsel for the U.S. Department of Agriculture. The event is free and begins tomorrow, or tonight, excuse me, at 5.15 at the law school. CU Law School has a new dean, James Anya. James Anya's teachings writing focuses on international human rights and issues concerning indigenous people. This comes after current dean Philip Weiser announced he will be stepping down in July. Anya will be beginning his duties in early August at the School of Law. Coming up after the break, what would you do at the age of 100? We take a look at the women who proves you're never too old to fly. And Bernie Sanders stole a key win in Colorado earlier this month. Can you do the same in New York? We break down the Empire State primaries after the break. The New York primaries are underway following two upset victories in Colorado. 
Joining us now is our political reporter, Andrew Hobner. Andrew, what can we expect from the candidates? Well, the polls have still yet to close, but there's still a lot that you will see. And what I think is going to happen is a return of frontrunner supremacy, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump being extraordinarily strong and probably winning out this state. But with the Democratic and Republican national conventions only three months away, candidates are really starting to turn up the heat. With only three months until the national conventions, New York has found itself the center point of a pivotal matchup between Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. New York had my back and I always tried to have your back. And I will again if I'm so fortunate enough to be elected your president. So far, Clinton holds a sizable lead on Sanders, who will struggle without the independent vote in this primary. Independents cannot participate in the Democratic primary. We, we usually win the independent vote two to one. So we're kind of spotting Secretary Clinton a whole lot in that regard. But his supporters are still optimistic. And on the other side of the aisle, there's another anti-establishment candidate who looks to be the favorite in New York this week. His name is Donald Trump. I think it's a great honor for New York. New York is a special place, so we're going to make America outside. great again. Thank you very much. Though the Empire State is almost universally blue during the general elections, either candidate from both sides of the aisle will be happy to walk away with the delegates that New York promises. Andrew Hovner, News Team Boulder. Now this is going to be a big night for Trump and Clinton, who both lost in Colorado earlier this month. If you take a look at the Democratic polls, Secretary Clinton holds a solid lead over Senator Sanders. But it's important to remember that she led polls here as well before the caucus, the one that Senator Sanders won by a wide margin. Mr. Trump, on the other hand, holds a commanding lead over John Kasich and Ted Cruz. Don't expect to see Ted Cruz doing anything based on his New York values comment. It's not going to be another upset. Clinton and Trump probably going to take New York tonight. An internationally awarded journalist is teaching CU students how to shoot documentaries. Ross Taylor is a visiting professor at CU, and he is quite the real. Taylor was awarded National Photo Journalist of the Year, and his work has been nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. Now he is a teaching graduate student, how to, or teaching graduate students how to shoot documentaries. The student projects cover everything from the world of marine life to a family with triplets that were born 15 weeks prematurely. In addition to creating documentaries, the students have been tasked with, with organizing a showcase that's happening next week. When I saw this class was being offered, especially when it was uh, being taught by Ross Taylor, who has an amazing background and resume for documentary, I was really excited to learn from him. You can see the documentaries for free next Wednesday, April 27th at 6 p.m. at Boulder Public Library or go to documentariesondisplay.com. One Women is showing us that it is never too late to check some things off your bucket list. Jerry Olin has more on this remarkable 100-year-old woman. <laughs> well, I'm not dead yet, that's for sure. That's right. Marie Smith is one month shy of 101. On Monday, she went on a journey, climbing up onto the wing and into the cockpit of a World War II training plane at the Chico Municipal Airport. With Daryl Fisher, the pilot and founder of the nonprofit Ageless Aviators, at the helm, Marie was taken on a whirlwind spin. In all, eight seniors from the Country Village Assisted Senior Living Center in Chico will take flight. About a 15-minute journey hovering over the city of Chico, a thousand feet in the air. 82-year-old Bob Saxton, a crewman in the Navy during the Korean War, was all smiles before and after his flight. Oh, it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed it. An opportunity that many younger people might enjoy, but one that is especially exciting for these folks. Is this good for people and seniors to be doing Doing this kind of thing oh yes oh yes I, I recommend it to anybody yes why because it's different it's something we, we don't have all the time we you know we, who gets to go in an airplane when you're old the only per people we've had upset are those that are frustrated because they didn't get to fly longer of the 1600 senior flights that ageless aviators is given marie was the second oldest person that's been flown 102 is the record a number nearly smashed by lynn balmer who'd planned to go up but decided to keep her 108 year old feet on the ground so instead it was the venerable marie who on this day was the oldest flyer and like all of the others very brave were you frightened at all? Why would I be? No, 
of course not. <laughs> Living life, all of it, to the fullest. In Chico, Jerry O'Lennon, KRCR News Channel 7. Age is really just a number. Thanks, KCR and Jerry Olin, for that story. Well, after this weekend's heavy storms, it's looking like all the spring snow has finally started to melt. Personally, I am very ready to have this because I've been barricading myself in the St. Julian for the past weekend because this San Diego blood cannot handle this harsh weather. Emma Turetsky is here to tell us when we can expect it and really warm up here in Boulder. Don't worry, Sarah, it's warming up all across the country, but when will Colorado catch up? Your four day forecast and more after the break. He seemed fine to me. I thought he would just sleep it off. I didn't think he was that bad. I had no idea he was taking prescription drugs. He only drank as much as me. I was fine. We didn't want to get in trouble. I thought this kind of thing happened all the time. I thought someone else was taking care of him. If I would have called. 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 If I would have just called. I'd still be alive. Oh my God, what is she thinking? Her hair, ew. No one likes you. No wonder you don't have any friends. You're so ugly and fat. Ew, is she really wearing oh, that? Oh wow. So, yeah, she's so weird. Who wears that? That is so, so Oh wow. Seriously? Hi everyone, let's take a look at our current conditions here in Boulder. It's cloudy and 44 degrees right now and it's pretty humid at 81% with only light winds reaching 3 miles an hour. Now let's take a look at the weather across the state. In Denver, 50 degrees and up in Fort Collins, 52. Down in Colorado Springs, 49 degrees and moving to the mountains, 45 in Aspen. And finally out in Grand Junction, 58 degrees. Now let's take a look at our weather across the nation. It's starting to look like spring all across America, except naturally for the one cool pocket right here in Colorado. But anyway, starting out on the East Coast, 69 and sunny in New York, perfect weather to get out and vote in the state primary. A little south in DC, 86 degrees, and down in Miami, 81 degrees. Moving to the Midwest, 67 in Chicago, and 78 down in Dallas. And finally out in the West Coast, 77 LA in LA, and 76 in San Francisco. And now let's take a look at what we can expect here in Boulder over the next week. On Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high of 59 and a low of 38. On Thursday, sunny with a high of 65 and a low of 42. Next, on Friday, sunny with a high of 73 and a low of 47. And finally, on Saturday, sunny again with a high of 74 and a low of 46. And while it is finally starting to warm and dry out here in Colorado, that's not the case down in Texas. Tragic floods have ripped through the Houston area, leaving at least five dead and forcing hundreds to evacuate. An estimated 240 billion gallons of rain has fallen in the surrounding Houston area, amounting to almost 17 inches of water, and in some areas the water could be 10 to 15 feet deep. And the rain still hasn't stopped due to nearly, a nearly stationary area of low pressure that has essentially stalled over the area. Rainfall is expected to continue today. At least 1,000 homes have been flooded across the nine counties that have been infected and over 70,000 residents have been left without power. Authorities have responded to more than 1,500 flooding emergencies, and emergency crews have performed at least 1,200 high water rescues with at least 650 residential calls for help on Monday. We woke up to water up to our knees, and so we were just putting our animals in carriers to get them out and getting what medical supplies and what we could get out out. My husband has multiple sclerosis, he's a, he's a disabled vet and he's in a wheelchair and so we were waiting uh, for these lovely gentlemen to come and get us and thank God they did. The rain is expected to finally stop by the end of the day as that low pressure area is expected to begin moving northeast and significantly weaken. But for now, officials recommend those in flooded areas avoid walking and driving through flood waters as just six inches of moving water can knock a standing person down and two feet of water can sweep your vehicle away. Additionally, in the event of flash flooding, move to higher ground immediately as flash floods are the number one cause of weather-related deaths in America. And that's all for weather today. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Emma. Wow, it's exciting to see the Rockies off to such a great start. And the Buffs women's lacrosse team looks like they are headed to playoffs. Dallas Euros has in the studio with our sports news. That's right. That's right. We've got lots of good sports news across the state of Colorado. 
and it's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. I've got your sports news coming up after the break. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. The women's lacrosse team continued their stellar sophomore season, beating the Cal Golden Bears by a score of 16-4 last Sunday. The Buffaloes sit in third in the MPSF conference and are poised to play in the postseason. But this game against Cal was special, mainly because Colorado sent off their first ever senior in program history. Sarah Lotman ended her career at Kittridge Field with two goals against the Golden Bears and one more road game versus Oregon. I've never had someone leave the program before, and I know it's just me, it's just one person, but yeah, I think it is going to be a little strange. It's exciting, though, you know, and I think it gives us a little extra incentive, you know, that we have someone that's leaving to try and get, you know, what we want to do. Done. So how about them Rockies? Can you say first place in the NL West? Colorado was on the road against Cincinnati last night, winning four of their last five games and took the early lead with Nolan Arenado scoring on a ground ball to the shortstop. The Reds were able to tie the game in the sixth inning from a base hit by Jordan Pacheco and an error by left fielder Gerardo Parra. The ball got away from Trevor Story after a bad throw and the Reds were able to bring home a run. We head to the eighth inning with the game tied at one and man, this story is just never ending. How about this kid, Trevor Story? He hits a bomb to right center field for his league leading eighth homer of the season. The Rockies would get some insurance runs and win with a final score of five to one. I know you're probably thinking the Rockies in first place. Yeah, that's not gonna last. I mean, I don't blame you, but their pitching has been pretty good so far. If they can keep that up, then we can maybe see them playing in October. All right, let's switch over to the NBA now. The playoffs got underway on Saturday and three games were played last night. We'll start with the Dallas Mavericks against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Kevin Durant getting ready, trying to give the Thunder a two to nothing series lead. They go to the third quarter. Durant drives the lane and gets the balance to increase their lead to eight. The Mavs wouldn't go away as they got within one uh, in the fourth quarter. Look at Dirk Nowitzki doing what he's been doing for years. The fall away jumper off one foot. Now the Thunder have possession again. Deion Sanders, Deion Waiters gets the floater to somehow fall. Durant is pumped up off the sideline. Now it's tied at 81 with under 30 seconds to go. Raymond Felton gives the Mavericks a two point lead. The Mavs bench are going just absolutely berserk. But the Thunder still have a chance to win the game on the final play after Felton misses two free throws. Westbrook brings it down the court and finds Durant for the winner, but can't get it to fall. Westbrook misses the tip in, and then it's Steven Adams who tips it in. The refs call it good, but they went to the monitor and waved it off after the ball was still in Adams' hands when time expired. The series is tied at one game apiece, heading to Dallas. We'll go to the Rockets and Warriors game two in Golden State. Stephen Curry not able to play, though, due to a foot and ankle injury. The Warriors seem to be just fine without him. They still have that man, Clay Thompson, putting in work and scoring 34 points on the night. Andre Iguodala also had a big night with 18 points off the bench. Golden State fans feeling very good about their chances to repeat as champions. They, heard they head to Houston for game three. Now to the Eastern Conference. The Raptors were looking to get revenge against the Pacers after losing game one. Paul George led the way for Indiana on Saturday and did everything he could last night to do the same. He scored 28 points on eight of 15 shooting, but it was not enough as Toronto won that game 98 to 87. The series is tied at one and heading to Indiana to play game three Thursday night. 
There is only two games tonight. The first game comes on at 5 o'clock where the Boston Celtics look to even the series against the Atlanta Hawks. Then we head to the West Coast where the Grizzlies take on the Spurs. The Spurs won the first game, and I probably wouldn't expect them to lose tonight since they have only lost one game at home all season. Now from the NBA playoffs to the hockey playoffs we go. And man, was there some drama last night in Philadelphia. The Flyers were down two games to none and getting absolutely destroyed in the third game. Fans were handed light up wristbands before the game started and it backfired with many being thrown onto the rink. They are white and hard to see on the ice, making it very dangerous for the players to skate on. Flyers fans not only caused a delay of game, but it was also a penalty on Philadelphia and gave the Capitals a two minute power play. We'll wait to see what happens in game four, but I have a feeling the fans probably won't be receiving any merchandise. That wasn't the only drum in the NHL last night as the LA Kings and the San Jose Sharks played a close game. The Sharks won the first two games of this series on the road in LA and had a chance to win game three at home. Joe Thornton gave San Jose the early lead, only taking 30 seconds to get on the board. Not exactly the start the Kings were looking for, but they would come back. Jake Musin fires off a shot that is blocked, but Milan Lucic gets the rebound and passes to Anzi Kopitar for the game-tying goal. We head to overtime with the same score. Tanner Pearson for the Kings gets a breakaway and nets the winner in a must-win situation. The Kings win game three and are now down two games to one. The Kings and Sharks will play game four on Thursday night in San Jose. We'll see if these rivals put up another stunning finish. Well, that's all I have for sports. Ladies, I heard you have a good video of Johnny Depp and his wife. That's right, Dallas. It may be Depp's worst on-screen performance, but I'll let you guys decide. We also have a ghost story coming up, so stay tuned and we'll be back after the break. Sounds like you could use some Van Goghurt. It's fortified with arch-rich nutrients to improve your math and reading skills. Catch! Van Goghurt. Thanks. So what's the deal with your ear? Always with the ear, huh? Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Listen well, all of you. A wildfire. No! <gasps> can come from anywhere. Where? Even the most unexpected places. But 9 out of 10 are caused by humans and can be prevented. Protect our friends in the forest. <laughs> prevent wildfires. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Johnny Depp and his wife Amber Heard have issued a public apology to avoid a dog smuggling conviction in Australia. Last year, Heard, Heard failed to declare her two Yorkshire Terriers when entering Australia to visit Depp who was shooting his latest Pirates movie. Australia is a wonderful island with a treasure trove of unique plants, animals, and people. It has to be protected. Australia is free of many pests and diseases that are commonplace around the world. That is why Australia has to have such strong biosecurity laws. And Australians are just as unique, both warm and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. I am truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. Declare everything when you enter Australia. Heard was spared conviction yesterday after pleading guilty to knowingly producing false or misleading documents. Some say the Stanley Hotel is haunted and now we might have proof. If you take a look closely at the image, you might be able to see a woman at the top of the stairs with a child standing beside her. A paranormal expert in Denver weighed in on the image and says that the photo appears to be a real deal. The photographer says the room was empty when he took the picture. So I don't know about you, but I would say plan you should not plan on visiting the hotel. I can't do ghosts. It's too much for me. <laughs> That's what scares me the most, like the scary movies with the crazy killer. Those right? are okay, but it's like the ghosts it's and the demons. Totally. Casper is misleading. It's not what it is. I agree. I can't do it at all. Mm -hmm. So now that you guys have ghosts in your head, it's time for us to say goodbye. Join us Thursday at noon for our last show of the semester.